Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. It is a chilly start to the day today. Uh, we are getting out early to get ready to start milking. Now we've got some other things we need to do today as well. We thought we'd bring you along though to start with chores this morning before we move on to a project. We have had a very mild fall and early winter. And so the fact that winter has like all of a sudden showed up and tomorrow they're predicting a sizable amount of snow, we need to get this place uh, in order and get the animals ready for like real winter. Right, um, really we need to get the hoop coops all ready because if we're gonna get snow tomorrow, we can't have snow, you know, we can't have the hoop coops filling up with snow. But before we can do anything today, we need to start with chores. The first thing we need to do is milking. Good morning, babe. Good morning, babe. You're such a good girl. Things are a little bit different around here these days because we have started separating Ralphie overnight. Uh, he is in the lean-to area here so that he can't drink from Babe overnight. Just recently, we have come out to milk and there's been like hardly any milk at all because he is drinking so much. So now that he's six weeks old, he is old enough to be separated overnight. Uh, so we will milk and get almost all of the milk in the morning. I do keep one quarter completely full for him. Um, and then when we're all done milking and cleaned up and everything, he gets let out of here, reunited with his mother, and he can have his breakfast. But that is one change that we have done recently, and that allows us to get all of her milk in the morning, but it also allows us not to have to milk in the evening. So just one milking for us in the morning, all the rest of the milk goes to Ralphie throughout the day. This is a very common thing for homesteaders and, and small farmers to do. It's called calf sharing. So this is very common to separate the calf at night uh, to get all the milk in the morning and then the calf can drink all day long with its mother. All right, come on. Good girl.
it looks like that's about a gallon and three quarters, gallon and a half maybe. We'll take it inside in this container, then we strain it once we get inside and put it into glass jars. Okay, Ralphie. Breakfast. Breakfast time. Yeah, Mama. I told you earlier that I was going to save the milk from one quarter of her udder to make sure that Ralphie had enough for breakfast. The udder of a cow is actually divided into four quarters or kind of like compartments and each quarter has its own teat. So I can milk out three out of the four quarters using three out of the four teats, get all the milk out of those three quarters or compartments and leave one for him and that is where he is drinking his breakfast from. Also, cows have the ability to hold back some of their milk and not have all of it be milked out, uh, and then they can save that for their calf. So there is still a little bit left in all of her quarters, and that hind milk, that last milk, is where all the cream is, which is where all the fat is, which is perfect for the calves. Go get your feed. I'm coming! Last thing in Waddleville is to check on the quail. See how they're doing. Julia quail. What I've been doing is cutting down little trees and bringing them in here. And that way they have more places to hide, which has really calmed them down. But you can see over time, they eat all the, all the pine needles and everything off the trees. So it's about time for me to go get more. chickens come on out well this is our younger 
flock of chickens. We had two other small flocks that were older. Recently we sold those two so that we could just have this younger flock. We've also decided that over the winter we will allow them to come out here. We're inside our moat area which has our garden and our orchard and in the future we'll have berries. We have grapes in here too. So for right now they get to scratch around and find any bugs that aren't hibernating or dead in the winter and they are really enjoying it. Well chores are all done. The sun is starting to come out a little bit which is great. I think it's supposed to be out for a few hours today so hopefully we can accomplish our project while the sun is shining and it definitely makes it more tolerable outside. It's still pretty chilly but the sun makes it a little bit better. Like we said earlier today's project is to winterize the hoop coops that we're using because winter is here and snow is coming. Right. Yeah, I think it's supposed to start snowing overnight tonight and into tomorrow. I'm not sure how much we're going to actually get. You know, here in our part of Missouri, we don't get a ton of snow. We don't get snow like the people in Wisconsin or Minnesota or Illinois or even northern Missouri. Right. We get, you know, a few inches every winter, but it's enough. What happens here is we get snow and then it warms back up enough that it just turns into a big muddy mess. Yeah. And we try to keep the animals as dry and as much out of the wind as possible. And that is really uh, the purpose of what we're doing today. All of our animals will be fine in the cold here because it really doesn't get that so, so cold. Right. So the majority of what we're doing today, like Kevin said, is to provide a windbreak, which is important for them, and to keep out the majority of the moisture, whether that is snow, sleet, or rain over right. the winter. So behind us are two of the hoop coops. The quail coop, we already showed you guys in a previous video, we pretty much winterized that or uh, we did winterize that probably, I don't know, six weeks ago or so. So that one is pretty much done, although I do want to show you some finishing touches that I put on it. And then this is the hoop coop where the ducks and the geese live. And so on this one, really what we need to do today is we need to cover up the sides and we need to cover up, I think probably up to about here on the door. The back on this one, when we built it, we left a taller back on, and I don't think we need to add any more to the back. So I think this one will be these two sides and the door up to about here. And then along with these, along with this one, we also have the one that the Silkies live in and the one that the American Breasts live in, and we need to get those all done today. Before we walk down by the Silky Coop, let's take a real quick look at the, at the uh, Quail Coop here. I'll show you kind of how I finished that one up and then we'll go take a look at the other two that we have to do. So the quail coop is a little bit different than the others. Uh, if you remember when I originally built this, this one for one thing has a floor on it, so they're not right on the ground, which keeps them drier. The quail in general are a little more fragile than some of the other birds that we have, so they need a little bit more protection. So on this one, um, you know, we already added these two sides on here, which these come off in the summer, and then this is all just uh, hardware cloth. And then we also added this uh, hinge section on the front door so that when we do get really cold or really rainy weather, this can actually fold down and they'll be completely sealed up inside of there. That's been working out really well for the quail and it keeps them nice and, and safe and out of most of the weather. On a nice sunny day like this though, I do like to open it up so they get more fresh air. Now remember we put a clear tarp on this one over the winter so that they get extra sunlight in there so when it is all closed up it's still nice and bright in there and it gives them some extra heat. Let's go around to the back and I'll show you real quick what I did on the back and then we'll head down to the silky coop. In the summer we just have this metal down at the bottom we added this panel for the winter, but I decided to make this hinged so that on nice days like today, we can open that front door panel and we can lower this so that they get some good airflow through there on the warmer days. And then I, I was having a hard time figuring out how I was gonna get this to stay up, but what I ended up doing is I took two of these braces that you can buy, they're really for like doors to put a two by four to hold a door 
So I added one up here and then I added one here and I welded a piece of metal to the bottom of this one so that I can take a two by four and just slide this down in here and then it won't slide all the way through and then that holds that up there nice and tight and protects them from the snow or rain or whatever we're getting at that time. Now, like I said, on a warm day like today, I'm gonna to leave this open so they get better airflow. And then tonight when we come lock up the chickens and everything else, I'll also make sure that I close this and the one on the front. All right, let's head down to the silkies. Now the silky coop over here, we're gonna to need to cover the sides of the front here and then the open section in the back. We'll leave this open uh, for ventilation and they'll be, they'll be fine. Now, if you remember last summer, the original silky coop and actually one other coop that we have here was picked up in a storm and thrown over the fence back here and like over near the pig pen and it got completely destroyed. We were able to salvage some of the parts, but for the most part, this one had to be completely rebuilt. I say that because we do already kind of have pre-made sides and back pieces from the old silky hoop coop. We may or may not be able to use that again. We're gonna try and see if it can fit good enough uh, just to keep you know the wind and the precipitation off of them. So uh, hopefully everything will work out fine. We can reuse all of those materials. Otherwise, we're gonna have to look around and see what we have to finish out this one for the winter as well. So this is the last one that we have to do. This will be by far the easiest because this hoop coop we've actually had now for several years. I think honestly, this was maybe the first, first or second one we ever built. But what that means is we already have all of the pieces we need for this one because what we do in the winter is we just store them inside of one of the barns and then we just mark them so we know which one they go on. So this one we already have. And then the other two hoop coops that we have, we're actually not using right now. We get, we sold the breast chicks that were, or breast chickens that were living in those. So we don't need to winterize those this year because nothing's living in them and nothing will be living in them until next spring. And you guys are gonna find out then what's gonna be moving in. So uh, this is, we have this one the silky one and the duck one to all get done today. I think we'll be able to do it before the weather starts to take a turn for the worse. Let's get busy working. Well, we're gonna start today with the easy one, the one that we've already had the panels made for because basically all we need to do for that one is screw them up there. Now, just like the other coops, we are going to cover up the sides here, but leave this front door open for some circulation. And again, remember the goal here isn't to make this airtight, isn't to make it 100% waterproof. It's just really to block the cold wind from the animals when it gets, you know, really windy outside and cold. If you live somewhere that's a lot more extreme than Southern Missouri, then you might need to do more than what we're doing. I think this is the fourth year that we've used these same panels and we haven't had a single chicken complain yet. All right, the front is done on that one. They'll be secured from the wind on that. Let's go around and do the back of it and then we can move on to the other ones that might be a little more difficult. All right, so this is the back piece. It's gonna be basically the same. We're just gonna hold it up there. It goes in between the fence and the uh, hoop coop here, and then it just kind of sits on this bottom board. And we'll just screw it in place. push it over that's good for me over here unless you need more room over there no, this it's fine okay there we go 
go. That one's all nice and closed up. Give them some nice wind protection. Let's move on to the next one. So these are the pieces that we had for our old silky coop. Uh, we've had them in the barn over winter. I'm pretty sure, now these are the pieces that go on the back. I'm, my guess is that these are gonna fit just fine because when I rebuilt this after that storm, I was able to reuse the entire back section. So I'm pretty sure that this is still gonna fit. It's these front pieces that we're not really sure about. So we're gonna hold them up there and find out. <laughs> Honestly, they don't need to be perfect. They just need to be good enough. Right. Honestly, if they cover what we need covered or most of what we need covered, we're going to call it good for today because we really don't have a lot of time left in the day. You know, these days are getting so short. We just want to get this done and make sure that they are protected, especially these silkies. They're not quite as hardy as some of the other birds. All right. Let's... Uh, Which side? I guess this looks like these were the outsides last time, so let's okay. try that again. Looks like that one's a little taller than we need it, but oh. that's not a big deal. I think it'll be okay. There's a little space over here. There, I think there was on the old one too. But so. I, and I think this kind of goes over a little. Yeah. I don't think it'll be a big deal. All right, it needs to come this way a little bit. Oh. There, that's good. Not too bad. It's a little bit tall on this side, but It'll be okay. again, I highly doubt the chickens will complain. <laughs> All right. That's good too. Yeah, I guess okay. that's, that's okay too. The thing with building these hoop coops is that no two ever turn out exactly the same. So, but I think it's, it's okay. That's good. Yeah, I think that'll be good. This way when they're on the ground, they'll have a lot of windbreak. All right, time to see these pieces fit on the back like I said I, I I think they will because we were able to reuse this entire all of the wood on the back we we're able to reuse that'll be come down my way there well it's not perfectly straight <laughs> but I think it's gonna do the job I think that is going to be just fine. All right, two down, one to go. Now this one we know for sure we need to make all new pieces mm -hmm. for. So let's head over to the duck house and see what we can do. All right, so for the duck house, what we decided is we're going to use metal on both sides and on the door. We've got some old, you know, old rusty metal from when we had one of our buildings re-roofed. I always hang on to this kind of stuff, and if I can ever get more, I always get more because it comes in so handy. All right, so the easiest way to do this is to just stand this up here. And then we're simply going to trace back here with a Sharpie, and then we'll cut this out. Uh, and then we'll cut this out with my tin snips. I'll show you that in a second. So I'm going to have Sarah come hold this, we'll trace this on here, and we'll cut it to shape. Okay. All right, so we've got our line drawn on here, and you can see what I like to use, if you're doing much work with this metal like this, this ribbed metal, this corrugated metal, 
one of these tin snips that goes on your drill or on your uh, impact driver is so nice to have. They're not that expensive, and if you use them, you know, much at all, it's definitely worth the price. And especially when you're doing diagonal, th or, you know, rounded things like this. So, this. We should be able to just trace this line and cut this right up. hold it up there I think that's gonna be perfect let's go ahead and do the other side so I can do that before I take the tin snips off the drill and then we'll get them both screwed up there All right, well, the duck house, duck, I keep calling it the duck house, but it's the duck and goose house is completely done. I think this is gonna give them some good, you know, extra protection. We didn't do a whole lot on the door, only up to here, because I didn't wanna have to mess with the latch. And, you know, they don't roost up on perches like chickens do, so they're only down on the ground. So as long as they're protected on the ground, they're just fine. Now, when we took a break for lunch, we happened to look at the weather forecast. And wouldn't you know it, the weather forecast has changed. And they're not calling for snow at all tomorrow. <laughs> right. But it's a, this is Missouri. And if I know one thing, it's that we could go back in the house right now and it could change back to calling for snow again. So who knows? It's only a matter of time until we're going to get snow. Well, we actually got a little bit last week that caught us off guard. We should have had this done before that. So you know we're gonna get more, and this way we're all prepared when it finally does come. You guys, we're so happy that you joined us today to do chores in the morning and to secure these coops for the winter. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. You guys, if you're enjoying our videos, we'd love for you to hit the subscribe button and remember that the best way you can help us here on the homestead is just to share our videos on your social media. Until next time, thank you so much for stopping by our homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.